Okay, the Lord be with you guys. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you today uh, for this holy week. Uh, for those of us that are Christian, it's a it's a week of resurrection. It's a week of 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 uh, all the things our patients go through, whether it be um, anxiety or fears, their families, but also we know ultimately that it ends in resurrection. Um, our Jewish brothers and sisters, they also um, this day, this week, um, at the end of the week, um, celebrate Passover, which is a rite of freedom. And that is also wonderful for our patients to know that they will one day be free, set free from all the bondage of their bodies, all the, the, the sicknesses of their hearts. Today, we lift up those that are mourning, those that um, are grieving, especially um, the families of people that recently in this last year have lost loved ones. Maybe it's the first anniversary for them. Um, help the resurrection and freedom to be two themes that help them um, through these trying, these trying times. We pray for all our patients. We pray that you would send um, your holy angels to be with them, to watch over them, um, to comfort them, to let them know that the, the peace of all human understanding, um, which is in you. We pray and we give you thanks for our team today. We pray for especially acknowledgement this month for the social workers. Um, that do so much. They're such helpful people that point point uh, people to services um, that are such so helpful for their peace of mind and also for their body and strength. We also pray uh, for Jill today, who recently found out she has cancer. Um, be with her through this um, this dark time, this time of anxiety, and um, help her to get the help she needs and help her to see that there are other people that love her just as, as you, um, you, you had um, people raise, uh, raise a, a sick person through a roof to get to you for healing. Um, help her friends um, and her family to do so um, and help Canon if we're involved um, to help uh, carry her um, to you. We pray for Donald and Nola in the Baton Rouge office and um, we, fr we pray for Dr. Kula for the entire staff. We give you thanks for the many talented and compassionate workers on, in all different teams associated with this um, ministry at Canon. And uh, we thank you for a sign of resurrection that we have now um, vaccines that are potent and can help um, give us freedom um, once again, safely, as we, we start to um, have a fuller life once again. We ask all these things and we give you um, all glory and help us to be ever mindful of your death and your resurrection. And we pray for um, um, your guidance for all of your people to can continue to guide us through all the wildernesses in, in our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, guys. <clears throat> Good morning. Canon Hospice has been presented with a tremendous challenge with COVID-19 and uh, um, here we are, Canon <clears throat> Hospice and uh, the leadership uh, that has taken you know, the leads in trying to serve the community beyond hospice. So I want to present to you this COVID-19 has not been fair to every race and every individual. So here I present to you a, a bar graph where uh, you see the blacks and uh, you know other minorities you know had uh, uh, difficulties you know whether it's paying for a basic necessity like the food, heat or rent or use up you know their most of their savings or they borrowed borrowed money taken out a loan or suffered economic consequences. This is disproportionate. And uh, when it comes to, I am trying to move forward. When it comes to the sickness as well in East Baton Rouge Parish where uh, uh, <clears throat> our active uh, leadership is working, you see up here in the, in the blacks, the increased number of COVID cases as well as the deaths but unfortunately, when it comes to the vaccines, here we see 25% vaccination rate in the blacks and 62% vaccination in the whites. And this is a, a disparity that uh, we need to work on. And uh, that's exactly what's being done. Here's another uh, a survey that shows 41% uh, of the blacks 
received or will receive the vaccination. So it is a very significant um, disparity in uh, not only sickness as well as the vaccination, but you and all of you uh, being healthcare providers, doctors, they will listen to you across the boat. Whites, blacks, Hispanics, everybody will listen to you. And that's exactly, you know, what has Carla has done, taken the leadership in East Baton Rouge Parish and uh, went knocking on the doors and she's going to tell her story. But uh, it's a proud moment for Canon to have a leadership that plays uh, so very well in, into the cause or the need of uh, Canon I mean, community in general. Here is the story in uh, New York Times. Uh, and here is uh, her knocking on the door to door, uh, been uh, clipped on uh, WBRZ. And here is uh, <clears throat> NBC. And here's a clip from CBS. So basically, uh, what I'm trying to impress upon you is the nation recognizes the need to fill that disparity, to correct it. Correct it. As soon as possible, because there is a need for us to have achieve a herd immunity, which is the maximum number of people uh, being vaccinated, which is predicted to be like anywhere from seventy to eighty percent. Right now, in in our nation, that we only have to fifteen to twenty five percent range, depending upon if they receive the both the vaccines then it's a 15% if they receive at least one vaccine, maybe 20 to 25% in different states. So what I wanted to bring to your attention is uh, that in the end, the battle will be won or lost when it comes to COVID-19 by the communities, not by the doctors or the hospitals. So essentially what I wanted to impress upon you that we all have a role and I am so proud to have the leadership of Carla Brown. And I'm going to ask Carla to explain and detail the God's work she's doing in the community. Carla. Again, thanks to all of our Canon family and those that are listening. Um, really, it all started when Dr. Akula presented us with the data. I did not realize such a great deep disparity. And myself, I did the trial base of how to register for the vaccine. You had to go to these different websites and a website would send you to another place on the website. And it was during that time, my heart sank because I'm like, my God, this is good for people who are computer savvy, those who have smartphones, but what about those who only have the government phones or um, phone, you know, phones that are limited, have no access to internet, we are losing the battle. So that's when, even before anybody knew, um, I started knocking on doors in my own neighborhood, asking, did they receive uh, the vaccine? And the answer that I will get is hard to get online. Then once online, they were placed on a waiting list. But while they're being placed on waiting lists, other races are getting the vaccine. And to me, that was so unfair. So my husband was not able to receive this vaccine to save his life. Um, that's what pushed me now to just save as many lives as I can. The vaccine Moderna uh, was produced by an African-American doctor. I even tried to push that on the forefront when I'm dealing with uh, our culture of people to try to bridge that distrust they have in the medical field because out of all the race, we have been used as the guinea pig. So now I'm trying to build this trust so that they can save lives, save their grandmother's life, save their family. We know a lot of holidays is soon coming upon us and 
the need for this is so important. So with the help of, you know, Dr. Cooler, the whole Cannon family, um, I, and I don't want to start calling names because I don't want to leave nobody out, but Mayor Broom, uh, Weston Broom here in Baton Rouge joined the team. We were able to get Paul Bartolome, who is a pharmacy and a pharmacy in this black community, served them from over 40 years. And he had not even registered to receive the vaccine until we went to his store. So it's, it's just mind blowing. But at the same time, I do believe we can win the war.